Today we've got the biggest update in Realm of the Mad God history. Or, so I've been told. There's very little new playable content in this update. In fact, there's actually none at all outside of the upcoming event. Right on view, there's a new enemy. It's an incredibly long time to start off. This is a low level encounter though, so it just dies. Oops, oh, I got a coin. Coming in the Abyss of Demons, we have Syndicate member number two who is a grand shaman apparently. This one's significantly harder than the previous one, but still a rather low level encounter. It shouldn't be too difficult for the items we have. These are all event items pretty much, or tier 7 top tier in the game stuff. Really high level for what we're doing here. Event boss number 3 is fully not animated. It has no animations whatsoever. Of course, this is testing, so everything is placeholders and subject to change. There are new weapon types too, you might have noticed I have a Morning Star. This is another event item, but it acts exactly like the tiered ones. This boss though has some wild and crazy patterns. You can just stand away from that though, there isn't really any way to dodge that. I see no purpose in it. Also got lots of minion spam on this one. The other bosses that we've fought so far don't have minion spam. This one does though. This one also has no new faces. It certainly feels the least complete. This class has also been empowered with AoEs in addition to whatever lightning he had before. How many clicks does it take to get to the center of an Oryx room? Not very many apparently. Uh oh. Okay, it's over. The final syndicate member isn't even here. What have I done? The spellblade's good though. This isn't a spellblade, this is the morning star. Mercenary B is spawning in the realm. That means that eventually we'll get C is spawn. As far as I can tell, the ones in the realm are identical to the ones in dungeons. Sorcerer wasn't the only class that received a rework though. The assassin rework that was promised for last year is here too. It's about what you'd expect, nothing major. However, Untiered items can have stat mods that aren't wisdom, this is powered by vitality. For real though, Mighty Stein takes half a second to throw, that's faster than most poisons. It boosts vitality, which means it boosts itself each time you use it. It already does a reasonable amount of damage to start, it is over 6 seconds, but 360 on impact isn't bad. Landing a poison will now increase the damage of your dagger, so you can really go in. There's also dual blades as a weapon type, these ones. Just shoot two blades, as you might expect. Uh, not unlike the dueling daggers, actually, from the alien dungeon. Although, those are still considered daggers. Oh, you're making me run all the way back? Are you serious? Well, that was a lucky leviathan. Good thing I didn't run over it. Not that I would have run over a regular leviathan, right? I'm not that foolish. Assassin definitely shines better in single target than Sorcerer would with the extra damage from poisoned enemies. But Sorcerer is by far better for crowd control than Assassin. Assassin's sort of a middle ground. Sorcerer is all in on crowd control. Okay, Mercenary D is here. You can check it out, see the Mercenary D. This fellow is the strongest of the four mercenaries and also is not animated at all. Projectiles obviously work in progress as well. A lot of this event currently is work in progress, if you haven't been able to tell. It's supposed to be the like end game level mercenary, but instead you kind of AFK. It's definitely the most designed, I'd argue. I'm struggling a lot more than I should for what this is. I'm excited to see what this character's animations will be, honestly. The artists have a lot of work ahead of them, clearly, between the shots and the characters and the battle pass. What actually is going on here? What? Oh, it's over. That was easy. Oh, it's not over. Never mind. Dead. Two coins for that one. Although Sorcerer and Assassin were the only two classes to be reworked, every class got a new ult weapon type. There's now a longbow. It's a bow that's long. There's also some interregnum leer. This is part of the event, naturally. We'll show it off in the interregnum dungeon, which will open eventually. And here's a new event dungeon that drops all the items. Of course, it's very work in progress, at least visually. This is, of course, just a boss dungeon and nothing else. I was expecting there to be a dungeon to go along with the bosses, but clearly I was wrong. All our friends from the syndicate are here to kill us, except this time they're all threatening instead of just two of them. We're entering a new phase. This one requires me to stand still right here. For the most part. I am sickened permanently without this entire phase. Not much I can do about that, but what I can do is just kill all the enemies to progress the phase. Oh, whoops. I don't want to stand there. That portal's dangerous, the one that shoots the red shots. And they're all gone. We beat them all. 
But wait, there's one more foe. It's the... Uh, the Wanderer. You remember this thing from the dungeon modifier? Yeah, uh, she's back and has actually threatening attacks now, except... First we have to get a bunch of lore dumps. Here we go. Lore that... No one particularly cares about, and now this. All your favorite shapes are here from the original Wanderer fight. Now we got another lore dump, of course. Lots of lore. Open this. This is actually kind of bad for me. Oh, goodness. Um, lore dump, thank you. This phase pretty much is over before it even starts, because for some reason the boss stands still and takes damage for a couple seconds. More lore dump though, naturally. That's the end of the lore. No more lore. Lore is dead. Lots to dodge here, but I should be fine. I can tank most of it, honestly. Oh, it's over. It's already over. You know, despite the burst these longbows have, they're actually quite decent. They're fun to use. All the shots hit at the maximum range, unlike regular bows. Now, sword classes. This is a very original update. They've got a, they've got a flail. Look at this. It does exactly what you'd expect from a flail. Hey buddy, do you have new interregnums or will I have to go do a key? Oh, I'm not sitting here for three minutes again. So as far as the event content goes, that's it. But we still have a couple more weapons to look at. Like this flail, look at this. It shoots, it shoots shots. It does pierce, unlike regular swords. So this pretty much invalidates arcane rapier completely. No reason to use that item anymore. You know, it's still, it's still fine. But if you don't have a flail, then you're going to want to use Arcane Rapier. I think Arcane Rapier does still have a range advantage as well, so if you need range, you've got it. I need range, wow. This can also do lots of damage if you hit all three shots, but that's like point blank range to hit all three shots. Feels good to use these, certainly. Over swords, you just feel more- oh, I saw a crab. The crab didn't see me though, that's awesome. I didn't want to fight a crab today anyway, we're just going to go for the big man himself. Obviously this could also be called a mace, but some other class took the title of the mace, so it's a flail instead. I can't really get close to cannonballs, so this might not be a very powerful item. I can still sort of flail a little bit around. And it'll do an easy attack now, so I can flail easily. The chain link's armor pierce. You don't even need untiered items anymore. Crystal sword? Never heard of it. It does still have more range, actually. Similar to rapier, I guess. These items still have their niche, you know. They thought this through, clearly. I mean, they didn't have much else this month that the mat got to think through. There is a battle pass, but like, come on. There's nothing to test with that. Nothing to see. It's a battle pass. Got him. Oh, and there's the... Uh, the, the, the mercenary is here. Oh, I disconnected. That's fine. It's all the mercenary's fault. So, there's your testing experience, you know, you just disconnect randomly and then have to restart the client completely. The server gods are unable to open a dungeon because there's like two other people who opened a dungeon or something. Katana classes get some sort of exalt looking thing. Shoots an X, it's called a Tachi, I believe. The extra projectiles are actually part of the ring. The interregnum rings all have extra projectiles if you're using an interregnum weapon. This weapon has a sweet spot that feels really powerful when you're hitting it. I do like that. Hitachi might be one of my favorites for the alternate weapons, honestly. Call me an experienced Kensei because I'm... It's a... Oh no. What's going on? Hitachi feels good. I do like this sort of sweet spot thing. Is that going on? Oh, it's the mercenary event. Don't disconnect me, please. I'm gonna try to fight it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? A disconnect and another few minutes of wasted time? Here comes the big spell that serves no purpose, honestly. Like, what's the point of these? You just back off and wait. There's not any pattern to it other than it looks cool. It's like a visual thing. And then we got minion spam. This is probably the weakest of all the mercenaries, if you ask me. It's just minion spam and fancy patterns that are unavoidable. Like it's just, oh wow, it's shaped like some, it's shaped like an aim. Uh oh. I do like the touchy though. I think those shots are close enough together that you could hit them at the max range theoretically. The final alternate weapon is the spell blade, which doesn't look very interesting, but it's actually quite the opposite. You see, there are two projectiles stacked on top of each other here. One of them pierces through enemies and ignores defense. The other one does way more damage. Look at that. You know what? I take back what I said. This spell is actually pretty boring. The spell blade. This month of the Mad God.
The syndicate is out to get Oryx at any cost. In the end, it's a matter of... Indicate.